Ben Grimm, a friend and colleague of the brilliant physicist Reed Richards, who also happens to be bankrupt, needs money and support from one of the richest people on the globe. In the video, Reed explains the experiment he must carry out to demonstrate that exposure to a powerful cosmic storm carried by solar winds is what allowed evolution to occur on Earth. Research conducted from space on the Earth can impact developments in medicine and genealogy because another storm is approaching the world. Victor Von Doom, who is hearing the idea, has the financial means to support the research as well as to allow Reed access to one of his space stations, which is outfitted with a powerful barrier that can keep the researchers safe from the storm. Victor invites Sue Storm, his director of genetic research, to attend the conference since he is primarily concerned in how Reed's study would help his company. She is also the ex-girlfriend of Reed. Reed grants Victor's request for funding in exchange for 75% of all applications and patents resulting from the research because he has no other option. Sue tells Reed and Ben that she will be in charge of the launch as she leads them into the elevator. She consents to let Ben serve as the mission's co-pilot even though Johnny Storm, her brother, is already employed by Victor's business. The crew is preparing for the voyage six weeks later, right before the launch to Victor's space station. With Victor leading the trip, they dock at the space station in a shuttle, arriving nine hours before the cosmic event. The five of them go into the station's main module, the only area not protected by shields from which they can keep an eye on the cosmic storm. Ben will be the one to take samples from Earth outside of the station so they can be exposed to the storm before it comes. Johnny assists him in putting on his spacesuit for his extravehicular activity, and inquires about Reed's future plans with Sue after noticing that he is showing interest in her. Ben, in contrast to him, believes that she might still love him, and doesn't see it as a terrible thing. But when he secures the airlock chamber for the spacewalk, Johnny tells him he's glad his sister is with Victor now. Sue and Victor converse about their individual futures, while they remain in the main module. Victor is preparing to pop the question, and take Sue beyond the role of business partner. Concurrently, Reed is supervising the mission's advancement, when an alert goes off informing him that the cosmic event's threshold has moved six hours ahead of schedule. Now, before the storm reaches the station, they only have a few minutes to bring Ben back and raise the shields. Reed enters the module as Victor is about to pop the question to Sue, informing them that the storm is getting stronger, and pleading with Victor to call off the operation. He instructs Reed to get Ben inside, but he has little desire in doing so because he believes the shield will keep them safe. When Reed reaches Ben and Johnny, he explains the situation. Ben worries that he won't be able to return inside in time, but Johnny believes that jumping in the direction of the airlock will get him there the quickest. Victor starts to close the main module's shields as Ben jumps. Sue is furious that he would abandon everyone beyond the shield's protection, and she proceeds to assist others. Still, the storm is making landfall at the station already. The strong cosmic event zaps everyone, even Victor, but Ben is the first to get hit. Ben awakens later on Earth in one of Victor's institutions, where he and the others have been confined in quarantine. Victor, meantime, returns to work quickly because he has no other option given the disastrous impact on his company's stock due to the space station disaster. He can be seen chatting with his partners, and trying to persuade them that he can fix everything, but they only give him a week to do so before they fire him from the business. Once back at the institution, Johnny loses his patience and decides to go snowboarding on the neighboring mountains, breaking the quarantine. He receives an adrenaline rush while snowboarding, causing him to flare and burn through his clothes before briefly taking to the air. He hits the snow and makes a small crater around himself filled with water. Ben arranges a date for Sue and Reed at the cafeteria spending a brief time with them to ensure Sue is unaware of his true motives. He soon starts to feel a little off, so he leaves the ex-couple alone on the table and withdraws to his room. They get into an argument quite quickly, and during that argument Sue starts to fade into thin air. She knocks a wine bottle over, shocked at what is happening to her, and Reed inadvertently and inhumanly reaches out to get it. Excited to share with them what has happened to him as well, Johnny rushes into the cafeteria as Sue gets ready for their date. Victor starts to show signs of weird powers, and body-altering side effects from the storm. Reed and the others visit Ben to check on him, while discussing what could have happened to them. Johnny is only thinking about the amazing new thing he can do, but Sue is certain that it was the storm's effect on their bodies. When he demonstrates his fire powers to Reed and Sue, the scientist at last acknowledges that the storm had changed their DNA essentially. Ben steadily deteriorates as he gradually transforms into his new form. When Sue's passcode doesn't work. Reed is able to extend his arm at will and get it under the door and then to the lock, thwarting the efforts of the rest of the team to enter through his door. After showing Johnny his newfound power to unlock doors, he lets them in 
and they watch Ben fleeing the building. Victor enters the room as well, inquiring as to what transpired. Reed informs him that Ben was the one responsible, citing his peculiar reaction to being exposed to a cosmic event. Sue helps him grasp what he's been experiencing by explaining that every one of them has a unique set of symptoms. Victor tells them to go find Ben, and quickly exit the room. When Johnny asks Reed if he knows where Ben might be headed, Reed knows that Ben is most likely going to try to get home to see his wife Debbie. Indeed, Ben has returned to the city and is phoning his spouse from a payphone located across the street from their home. As he asked, Debbie walks out to greet him, but he wants her to wait so he can tell her what has transpired. Debbie shrieks in terror and flees back to their home the instant Ben emerges from the shadows to show himself to her. The next day, Reed and the others travel to the city to meet with Debbie, who has informed them that Ben was present the night before. Ben, meanwhile, is sitting atop a bridge when a man with a business-like appearance prepares to leap from the bridge and take his own life. As soon as Ben realizes what the man is going to do, he approaches him in an attempt to persuade him to reconsider. By scaring the man to no end, he is able to get him off the bridge in the right direction. Ben rushes down to assist the man, who has fallen in front of some driving cars as a huge truck is approaching them. Ben has no choice except to brace himself for impact with the car, and use all of his physical might to stop it dead. The collision results in a pileup behind the truck, and stops all traffic on the route because that is one of the busiest bridges in the city. Thankfully, Reed and the others have already arrived, so they get out of the taxi and investigate what's happening. Ben discovers that the truck driver is trapped inside the vehicle as he attempts to decide how to deal with the scared man and the surge of onlookers at the same time. In some way, the police have contained the accident site and are preventing Reed and the others from leaving. Ben forcefully opens the truck's door and removes the driver and the seat. Ben is told to put down and back away by one of the policemen, who is there to step in because they believe Ben is a terrible guy. Ben is able to flee while they are firing at him when a power wire breaks out. Using Sue's invisibility, the others manage to get past the police blockade in the meantime. Sue gets into a car and spots Ben as they approach the location. Johnny sees a girl stranded between cars next to a gas tank that is going to burst and decides to dash over to protect her from the flames with his body because the power cord sparks have started a fire. A couple cars are thrown into an oncoming fire engine by the explosion. It slices through the bridge and whirls off the road. Sue automatically uses a power she possesses to stop the fire from spreading out of control, as the explosion keeps getting bigger. One of the firefighters is forced from the vehicle by the fire truck accident and is left clinging to the truck over the river for dear life. Ben grips the truck to keep it from falling off the bridge as the other firefighters try to assist him. The truck is starting to tilt more into the river. When Reed decides it's time to use his power too, another fireman gets thrown toward the river on the stairs. The first fireman stumbles and starts to fall, but Ben barely manages to hold onto the truck before Reed grabs him and carries him back onto the bridge. At last, Ben succeeds in getting the truck back onto the bridge, allowing the second firefighter to reposition himself safely. However, the roaring throng surprises the cops, who drop their firearms and cheer themselves, asking Ben to get down on the ground. Debbie arrives on the scene, but she removes her engagement ring and walks away from Ben forever, when he approaches her with excitement. While assisting Ben in picking up the ring off the ground, Reed makes a promise to him that he will stop at nothing to change back to the person he was before. One of the officers enters the tent later, and gives the team the news while the paramedics are tending to them. The Fantastic Four are already being referred to as them. When Victor tunes in, too, he sees the team telling the media what has happened to them. He and his partners are not pleased with their interviews, and they leave the company without engaging in any negotiations. As the cops lead the Fantastic Four to Reed's building, the masses continue to assemble. Upon entering Reed's lab and apartment, he advises Sue and Johnny to remain there until they ascertain the full scope of their modifications and devise a plan to undo them. Sue is settling into her new room, and looking through one of Reed's photo albums, recalling fun times, when Victor enters. She tells him she's sorry for not contacting sooner, and that she will remain at Reed's house, even though he insists that his doctors examine her. When Reed arrives, he informs Victor that he is still unsure of the degree of their DNA's alteration. Victor says they're all in this together and offers his assistance. Reed apologizes before leaving that the mission didn't go as expected, but Victor holds him responsible for the events, feeling hurt over the implications for both himself and others. But because Victor didn't stop the assignment when he urged him to, Reed believes they're both at fault. Victor becomes extremely enraged and orders Reed to quickly fix whatever is wrong, disrupting the building's power supply in the process. After hearing the altercation, Ben joins them, putting an end to it and forcing Victor to leave at last. 
Victor hits a wall in the elevator, and notices that his body is changing as well. Later, in an effort to determine the origin of the mutation, Reed and Sue test Ben and Johnny. Ben's organs are visible to be fully solid, and Sue's invisibility is caused by her capacity to bend light. They learn from more research on Johnny that he has the potential to reach temperatures as high as the sun, if not higher. They warn him that he can wipe out all life on Earth if he permits the levels to rise to that point. Sue gains control over her invisibility with Reed's assistance, but her other talent is still a little out of control. As this is going on, Victor's physician, informs him that his body is transforming into a type of organic metallic alloy that is tougher than diamonds and stronger than titanium. Having not been able to adequately explain the infection to either Victor or himself, his doctor believes that it will be over in two to three weeks. Victor murders him, because the doctor believes there may be an infectious disease, and that he should report this to the CDC. While working diligently in his lab, Reed notices that their clothes, or uniforms have also changed in tandem with them. They have the ability to shrink, turn invisible, or withstand fire. Sue reminds Johnny that he can't use his skills in public since it could be hazardous, and Ben makes fun of them for appearing like an 80s band. Later, Sue loses the crowd by going invisible once more after being stormed by several admirers due to their increasing fame. Upon her return, she informs the others that it is truly impossible for them to go outdoors anymore. Johnny assures them that he will be able to fly soon because Reed is equally concerned that their powers are still developing. When Ben asks Reed whether he might heal them, Reed responds that he might be able to undo the storm's consequences. They might get back to normal if he builds a device that can replicate the cosmic storm and reverse the wave signal it produces. However, there is a good chance that it will boost their powers to an exponential degree or perhaps kill them. All four of the Fantastic Four adjust to their new living arrangements and powers while Reed works on the machine. Victor is also changing and becoming more irate by the minute because he has lost his job and the media is focusing a lot of attention on his mistakes. He discovers that in addition to being metallic, he has electrical control. He approaches one of his partners in the following scene, and utilizes this new power to murder him. As Johnny makes the decision to move out of the apartment because he can't bear to be stuck there, Reed is working with other scientists to finish the machine. Following Johnny's outrageous stunt, which is seen on ESPN in real time, the other players approach him to confront him about it. Ben is prepared to whoop his behind in response to Reed and Sue's rebuke for acting like a baby. After Sue breaks up their quarrel, Johnny admits to Reed that he wants to stay the same and suggests that they might have been given the abilities for a purpose. Victor gathers a few resources at the same time in order to assassinate Reed and destroy the Fantastic Four. Later on, he keeps an eye on Reed's lab and devises a scheme to eliminate Ben first. Ben is found by Victor, who tells him that he was concerned about him and instills in him negative ideas and thoughts against Reed and the others. He accuses his friend for not trying more to return him back to normal when he notices Reed and Sue in the lab. Ben isn't listening to Reed when he tells him that he needs to wait a little while longer to get the machine correct so he doesn't damage them further. He starts striking him and wants to fight, but Reed stops him in his tracks and soothes him. Ben departs from both the team and the lab. Reed chooses to test the machine on his own, while Johnny and Sue also have a falling out. When Sue returns to the lab after realizing what he's done, she discovers that Reed has worsened his abilities. After Sue and Reed depart, Victor keeps an eye on things and arranges for Ben to be brought to the lab. He informs Reed that although Reed is unable to get the machine to produce the required amount of electricity, he is. Ben is sufficiently gullible to fall for his ruse and get inside the computer. Ben is back to normal when Victor uses his powers to power the gadget. Ben discovers that Victor had it all along planned when he emerges from the machine transformed and joyful. After declaring that he has accepted his fate, Victor knocks Ben out. As soon as Reed appears on schedule, Victor zaps him out of the building, overheating him to the point that he loses control of his power and collapses. After eventually donning his mask to conceal his face, Victor scoops him up at the base of the skyscraper and brings him to his office. Ben tells Sue and Johnny what happened with the machine when they locate him in the interim. It dawns on them that Victor had to have stolen Reed. Victor targets Reed's lab with a missile in an attempt to eliminate the other members of the super squad, while torturing him by superkling him. When Johnny and Sue notice the missile, he leaps from the building in an attempt to divert it from the lab because he knows it's a heat-seeking missile. At last, Johnny is able to fly, and he steers the missile away, neutralizing it somewhat safely. Sue departs to assist Reed, while Ben returns to the chamber to regain his abilities in order to assist in the fight against Victor. When Victor arrives, they start arguing, at which point Sue becomes invisible and takes off Reed's shackles. Sue uses her powers to assault him, 
because she is unable to get him to listen to her. She becomes invisible as Victor fights back, but he still finds her, and is prepared to kill her. Ben suddenly uses all of his powers to break through the walls and clobber Victor. After the two of them free Reed, Victor simply tackles Ben and ejects him from the structure. The cops and the throng surround them as soon as they hit the ground. Ben tosses a car at Victor just as he's ready to zap the officers after they fire at him, understanding he poses a greater threat. Since Victor is unharmed, the fight goes on until he manages to subdue Ben. But before he can murder him, Reed and the group arrive, defend Ben, and launch an assault on Victor. The Fantastic Four are attacked by the enemy as he charges at them, but they are unable to repel him. Before telling Johnny to proceed to his maximum level and fight Victor, Reed is able to temporarily restrain him. Ben pulls Reed off of Victor, as Johnny creates the fire and Sue contains it with her abilities. Once they get Victor's metal body hot enough, Ben showers him with water. That stops Victor in his tracks since rapidly cooled metal hardens fast. The Fantastic Four stop the villain they helped create and become a super team, to the praise of everyone around them. Later, they celebrate their success on a boat. Ben is there with his new girlfriend, while Reed and Sue get engaged. Johnny is just up to his regular shenanigans. In the last moment of the film, Victor is seen still alive, but being shipped back to his home of Latveria. 